Now this is video two of three, all about subclinical hypothyroidism. I'm going to teach you about the prevalence of subclinical hypothyroidism and why it affects so many people. Also tell you why the blood tests do not tell you the true story about what's going on inside of your body. And I'm going to give you a key tip that's going to support your metabolism. The prevalence in various different studies has shown that about 17% of women aged 45 to 64 have subclinical hypothyroidism. If we add to that the numbers of women that fall just outside the blood tests that reflected that, then we're talking over 20%. Over 20%, one in five women aged 45 to 64 at least has a degree of subclinical hypothyroidism. So it's, uh, I guess we could call it a pandemic. It affects a huge proportion of the population. And it's also happening more at the time that women are entering the perimenopause and menopausal state too. So why does the blood tests not tell us what's going on? Now TSH, T4 and T3, so there's, there's the hormones we're talking about, thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH from the anterior pituitary. That's believed by some doctors to be the key reflector of what's going on with thyroid hormone. And it is so wrong. It's influenced by so many different factors and not just the levels of T3 that are circulating in the bloodstream, like a negative feedback loop. The medics often believe it's actually a perfect like thermostatic control and if TSH is out it must mean that the other hormones are out as well. It's not true. Secondly, the levels of T4 and T3 are not the ones that are active, it's the free levels of T4 and T3. And so you can see it's a little bit complicated. We've got the, the anterior pituitary producing TSH, the thyroid makes thyroxin which is T4 and only a fraction of that is the active form which is free T4 and then that converts to free T3, which is a tiny amount. So then they're measured in nanomoles and picomoles in blood tests. Now the blood tests are very accurate for what they're looking for, but they're just not accurate to reflect the state of health that you're in. And the reason is that the reference ranges for medical purposes looking for disease, for diagnosis of a disease, are very broad. So the reference range is very broad. You can fit in that and still have symptoms. So it's actually reflecting of a population saying you should be okay when you're not. So the reference ranges are too broad. Secondly, the blood tests that you have conducted may not reflect, may not test T4 and free, well, free T4 and free T3, the actual active thyroid hormones. And so they measure T4 and T3 or just TSH. It's not complete. So just to give you the gist, effectively blood tests are accurate for what they're measuring, but they're not a re the, what you're measuring is not an accurate reflection of how your metabolism is working. Thyroid researchers in 2017 quoted something that I've been observing in clinical practice for 28 years, and that is that the levels of serum in the blood tests and the, the levels of hormone in the serum should not be confused with the levels of hormones within the cells themselves. And then we need to find better technology to identify what the thyroid hormones are within the cell, which is yet to be with us. So signs and symptoms are key for this. And your signs and symptoms is what you're suffering with in terms of subclinical hypothyroidism. That needs to be addressed and should not be ignored effectively. Now the prevalence, so up to 17% of women aged 45 to 64, but if you include the levels that effectively are not assessed by blood tests, it's at least 20%, it's so at least one in five, and I would estimate it's actually higher than that. Maybe even one third of all women aged 45 to 64 have a degree of subclinical hypothyroidism. So I just thought I'd explain to you, that vitally, vital for you to understand that the prevalence is massive and the likelihood of being picked up by blood test is low and the, the blood tests don't reflect um, really what's going on inside of you. So now I'd like to share with you a key tip really important. So the, the tip in the first video was beware of cardiovascular aerobic steady state exercise. Don't do it. Don't do it. It is tiring you out. The second vital tip is something that's going to support your metabolism in a way you may not have understood. Now protein, you know that protein is important for us, protein is the only macronutrient. It's the only macronutrient of fat, protein and carbohydrate. It's the only one that actually requires calories to be burned. So by eating protein regularly your body burns more protein. The reason is that in order to incorporate the proteins into new body cells for the new turnover and makeover of the body, it requires energy. And so protein is the only building, it's the anabolic hormone, it's the anabolic macronutrient. And to use protein, it uses energy. In one study, really fascinating, they took a group of individuals and they had them have a higher carbohydrate diet and they measured how many calories they burned. They had the very same people after a washout period of having a normal diet 
had more protein, had a, a certain level of protein at each meal. Those individuals burned 300 calories more a day because of the protein. It's called a thermogenic effect. So tip number two to support your metabolism and to help your thyroid hormone function is to have protein at each meal, particularly at breakfast. So absolutely vital. Have protein each meal for a thermogenic effect. So we've got two crucial pieces of information. One is do not do cardiovascular exercise in order to lose weight. You'll simply lower your energy and lower the thyroid hormone metabolism. And the second one is to have protein each meal to raise your metabolism. Absolutely vital. In num video number three, I will share with you more information about macronutrient ratios and I'll talk to you about why intermittent fasting may be something you should not be doing if you have subclinical hypothyroidism. Tune in next time and thanks for watching.